How's it going guys? This is Vaughn. We're back here with some more American Truck Simulator. We've got a cool one for you today. We're driving the Freight Shaker Classic XL from John Ruta. We've got the awesome FedEx Express skin on there. And uh, man, this is a beast of a truck. Uh, we'll get into all the specifics and everything once we uh, pick up our trailer as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, move forward a little bit. Let's go ahead and turn her on. Get our lights on there. Our trailer is... Whoop. Parking brake on. Our trailer is just down the way over here. There it is right there. Finding new route. Hope I pulled forward enough. Uh, well, we don't hit that low boy behind us. You have arrived at yeah, we're fine. Okay. I guess the GPS is trying to take me to my trailer, which uh, we I appreciate, but we don't really need GPS guidance since we're only a, a few yards away from it. But <laughs> yeah, we'll take it. Alrighty, let's attach. Sweet. All right, so let's just run through what we got here real quick. Uh, so again, we have the Classic XL Freight Shaker 70-inch mid-roof, and then we're pulling the Barrett Livestock Trailer from Pister. So uh, that's what we got going on today, and we've got a 554-power uh, cat engine in there, 18-speed uh, trans with a built-in retarder in it, 280-gallon uh, fuel tank. Man, this thing's a beast. Unfortunately, the chassis only came in one option for this uh, for the mid the 70-inch mid-roof. I think this is part of the, the latest update, I want to say, if I'm not wrong. Um, but it only came with one chassis option, which, which was a 6x4, so it's kind of what we're doing. Uh, but uh, man, what a beast of a truck. Uh, we're pretty much ready to take a load, so I'm going to go ahead and go to a job market, see what we can find here. Uh, let's see. Got quite a few that we can do. How about two Rock Springs? Oh, starting in Texas. <laughs> no wonder. Yeah, we need somewhere in Montana. I wasn't paying attention to the pickup point. Okay. How about this one? We'll take this one. Um, it's going to Hell Creek Ranch. Uh, so we actually have to drive a little bit to go pick it up, which is, which is fine. It's only a four hour drive, so it's pretty short. So. We get to see a lot of Montana along the way. It's going to take us an hour, 11 hours to get there. Uh, so let, without further ado, let's get going. So I'd like to also talk to you about where we're at right now. This is a custom logging site that's part of ATS expansion. Uh, this specific location is in Troy, Montana, but there are a number of locations that you can access uh, using this mod. And uh, let me just actually... <laughs> I can stop right here and just give you a, a brief glimpse of what we're looking at. Go to my outside view here. So this is what you get when you purchase. It's a It shows up as a garage option, but this is what you get. You get an entire logging site and the entire distance that you have to travel down to get here. And there it is. There's your entire uh, ranch or working site there that... Uh, they differ between locations. Uh, some will just be like a, a farm and a garage attached to it. I think I've shown you one of those already uh, in another video. Uh, but uh, this particular one has got a lot of a lot of areas to like, you know, it's a logging site. So there's a lot of production going on here as far as uh, tractors and workers out here. So super super cool and then you've got the different little uh you can see the little white squares over there um those would be where you would uh either fuel up or get your garage configuration options uh or where you would park to repair or upgrade your truck as needed um in my case because i have the mod that gets rid of those neon green icons that's why the, the white squares are there but otherwise you would just see the uh the green the green icons and such so, really cool that you get that with ATS Expansion, and that's not all you get. You also get uh, different delivery sites, such as the one that we're going to, Hell Creek Ranch. Uh, those are also custom as part of the ATS Expansion mod. 
I'll have a link to the um, page where you can install it, and it'll go through all the details because each state is different. Each state will have its own locations and garages and such you can purchase. So I'll have a link to uh, to that so you can go and check it out. That way I don't ramble on about it in this video. <laughs> so for now, I think I'm going to go ahead and just go over to our roof view um, and then just let you enjoy the drive as we uh, as we get out of here. So I'll shut up and let you enjoy it. Is that cool or what? Man, you, you cannot, uh, nothing can compare to that. Oh 
Holy cow. And that's just one of the, uh, the locations that you get. You can have uh, several of them things. Uh, each one will differ, uh, kind of like the, the one that I showed you before, of the uh, uh, custom farm that we had. I think it was in... Uh, Man, was it in uh, Wyoming? Cody, Wyoming? I think we have a, a ranch over there. Or a farm. Uh, and then we've got... Uh, in Waco, Texas, I think we've got a ranch over there. It's part of this uh, ATS expansion. So, amazing stuff. You've, you've got to go and check out the, uh, the mod there. And uh, specifically, also, they have the different versions for... Um, uh, what do you call it? Um, coast to Coast and Great America. So they have different versions of ATS expansion depending on what you're going to run run it concurrently with. Go straight. So you just got to pay real close attention to that. And then also that the uh, the mod requires uh, two other uh, instances of ATS expansion, uh, the different uh, assets to the mod that you'll need in order for it to work, so you have to pay attention to that as well, and I believe that you can get them on uh, Truckee, so but I'm going to have a link to the actual forum, the actual ATS expansion forum, where you can go and read up on it see all the cool features and everything so Good stuff over there, man. Uh, we're I think it's on. Uh, we're running version 6.5 right now. So good stuff, man. Good, good stuff. And yeah, the uh, the location that we're going to um, that we're or that is that we are taking our cargo to, or livestock cargo, is, uh, Hel <coughs> excuse me, Hell Creek Ranch. Um, that's one of the uh, locations that we can get. Uh, I want to say that you can get a garage there as well. If I'm not wrong. Or unless it's just a delivery location. I, I don't exactly remember. Um, but uh, that's part of it as well. So we're going to get to see quite a bit of it here today. But, of course, I implore you to go and read about it and look at the uh, very informative screenshots that show all of the locations in each state as well as the names and the type of location that it is so you know what's a garage and what's a ranch and what's a farm and what's a delivery site, all that stuff. <laughs> I definitely implore you to do that. And in other news, I am very glad to be able to uh, make this video today because, um, as I had covered yesterday uh, in yesterday's video, yesterday was when I got my wisdom teeth pulled out. Uh, so at the moment, um, if you can't tell in my voice by the fact that I'm not articulating my words properly, <laughs> um, uh, everything's still extremely sore and swollen. Um, I can, I can talk fine. Um, it's still hard, of course. Um, but any, you know, basically any movement of my mouth is, uh, you know, still painful. Um, but, um, yeah, everything went super well. And the, uh, of course it was one of those, uh, things where they put you under and, I have just very, very, very few and far in between glances. Oh, you know what? Let's get our interior light on. Woo, that's bright. I may need to I may need to turn that down a little bit. Maybe I should have went with a softer color, but this one's orange. Uh, I thought of going with orange, you know, for the, uh, the, the uh, FedEx Express uh, skin that we've got there. It's also kind of funny, the fact that we're, uh, 
we're running uh, FedEx Express skin, and we're taking kind of, kind of not FedEx product. Um, but anywho, I mean, I like this. I like the skin a lot. Um, there were so many to choose from as well. So many different uh, custom ones that that come with the uh, the truck. So the FedEx Express skin is part of the Freight Shaker Classic XL mod. Uh, it comes with it, so no extra skin to download. But I'm, I'm definitely going to be on the hunt for one. Oh, yeah, we got to stop here. Burn that red light. I don't know. Should I keep this on? Uh, we'll leave it off. It's that's too bright, man. There was there was like I think there was a green, blue, red, and orange uh, variety. So I went with orange. <laughs> uh, it's a little bright though. So we'll leave it off. We'll just enjoy the uh, we'll enjoy the dark colors. Uh, so also what we've got in here is the carbon uh, dash. Uh, we've also got so we got our GPS up there. We've got a little TV up there in the corner if you can see it, but just not showing anything at the moment because obviously you know we don't really have anybody else in the cab here with us. So why would I be watching if I'm going to be driving? Um, our onboard computer over there on the bottom left of the uh, windshield. Uh, we've got our radio down there, CB up there. Really, really a feature packed. <laughs> truck and I, I think also this is one of the uh the newly updated steering wheel creations wheels uh that's part of the scs dlc that they put out for uh steering wheels i think i could be wrong maybe this was already in there but i don't remember seeing it before so you can of course correct me if i'm wrong Right. It's kind of funny that in our um, in our drive down from our logging site, Turn right. <laughs> um, we accidentally got some trailer damage, and that's because the uh, the walls of snow are basically like brick. Uh, in the real world, it wouldn't be like that. We would just obviously just drive drive over it probably, but it is what it is. <laughs> you know. I don't know if that's because they, uh, the game makes you set a boundary for it or if it's just how the map came out and that's going to be changed. I'm not sure. Um, oh. Go straight. Man, look at these lights again, man. Catching all the red ones. Um, yeah, so unfortunately we got 1% trailer damage there, but I mean, you know, it's a, it's a livestock trailer. I'm not that concerned about it being pretty. Um, although, although, it is pretty. Let me look at that. All oh, those little markers lights on it. Help me see. Help me see it at night. Got it pretty customized. That's a free trailer, by the way, from Pister, so I'll have a link to that as well. Maybe at the next service shop or something, we'll uh, take it to get a little service. But it's not a priority. I'm not wor super worried about it. Um, and I'm also, you know, pretty cool with this being a longer video because of that. That I, I wanted to show you that part of the uh, ATS expansion mod. Uh, and also be able to show you, uh, you'll see Hell Creek Ranch once we get there. So that'll be pretty cool. Go straight. Um, I, at the moment, now own all of Ruta's uh, ATS trucks, I believe. So there's a W900, 389 glider, classic XL. No, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. He has a Cascadia there, too. I forget what it's called. All right, we gotta get over here, buddy. Thank you. Um, 
Oh, you can also kind of see we've got some tint on the windows. Or the, uh, sorry, the windshield. Not all the windows, just the windshield. At the, on the very top there. Yeah, the windows don't have it, but... But yeah, I was uh, excited to to get to try these out. So um, the W900 uh, is all I was using for a while, uh, but went ahead and purchased three more. Uh, the XL that we're driving now, the 389 glider, and the uh, 362 cab over, I believe is, is what it's called. Um, so we'll get to drive those two. Uh, I'm thinking the next two videos I'll cover each one. Uh, the 362 and the 3... Uh, sorry, what is it? 59? 79? 389, sorry. <laughs> At least numbers. I'm, anytime numbers are involved, I, I get... I get it mixed up. I'm horrible when it comes to game versions. I know there's... guys on the internet, or like I've, I've listened to, you know different podcasts before they talk about certain games and they're like oh yeah back in game you know version 1.13.2.6 that's when they added this but then 1.14.62 came out and that was done away with i'm like how do, how do you how can you keep those numbers straight in your head oh shoot I didn't register really my button um it may have had to do with the fact that i'm uh, I don't think I finished <laughs> or did even a lot of math in school. Um, math was my absolute most hated subject and therefore it was my worst subject. Um, I was, Go straight. I was uh, awful at math, so yeah, I'm sure that's where that comes from. But it's also ironic that I, um, I took drum lessons for, um, upwards of 10 years, 11 years, something like that. The rest has just been, I'm super, super rusty now. I'm not nearly as good as I used to be. And even then I was, I was still pretty amateur, but you know, I know my way around um, tablature and uh, I would read a lot of sheet music, learning different drum solos and snare solos. So I would learn some, some stuff that was good for like uh, school marches on the uh, snare drum only but I learned on a full drum set so I know all the different uh, pieces of the sheet music how to identify them and uh, I definitely also play a lot of pretty complicated music I've never actually really talked much about this but yeah drums were my passion like I wanted so bad to be Dave Weckl uh, he's a jazz, fusion jazz drummer. He is, he was and is still my idol. Uh, I, I still listen to his music all the time. It takes me back to when I was younger and taking lessons. And, you know, I learned from, uh, you know, my drum teacher gave me a variety of, of influence to, to look up to. So, you know, it was like punk rock drummers like Travis Barker. And then there was... Oh man, I have a super cool story I gotta tell you uh, after this. Uh, there was other, uh, let's see, who else was there that I looked up to a lot? Dave Grohl, obviously. <laughs> you know, Nirvana and uh, then, you know, Foo Fighters. So my my absolute, like, uh, childhood music was alternative rock or grunge, that, that kind of stuff. Soundgarden, Pearl Jam. Audio Slave, oh my gosh. I remember I was uh, back at our old house. Um, I was probably 12 or 13 years old. I would get up super early on Saturday mornings, go downstairs and turn on my stereo, plug my headphones in, and just listen to uh, that Audio Slave, the first album on repeat, just over and over and over and over. And just, it was just so like, it's one of those things where it's like, you, you wouldn't think a, you know like a kid would be into that, but it was because I had learned so many of those songs that 
you know because when you're learning a song on drums you, you're listening to it over and over and over again and then you're practicing in the car just like tapping with your feet or your hands on on the door or the seat and so you can get behind a drum set and play it for real so i know those songs like the back of my hand same thing with counting crows counting crows is my absolute uh still my number one favorite favorite band i know you know probably good four or five of their song right four or five of their albums each song on the album um so yeah that's just what i grew up listening to that's what i always kind of default to and stuff and um but when i say i had a, a broad influence um i would look up to you know alternative rock drummers like that but um there was also a point in time where I had two teachers at the same time. So the first one that I had been with, uh, you know, since forever, who first started teaching me at, at age six, first started teaching me, uh, as in I was age six, not him. Um, he uh, got me into some pop music as well. He got me into some, uh, what do you call it? What else did we do? Oh, Latin music. He got me to some Latin music. Uh, there was also for... Aw, oh, man. I was just about to start slowing down, too. And the speed limit just barely changed. Ah, oh, and now it's back to 35 again. Man, what a bust. Um, okay, we don't want to get hit with a second ticket. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was a while there where I uh, was learning a lot of Latin music, a lot of uh, cumbia grooves and... Um, like the bossa nova and mozambique grooves and stuff like that that's part of the reason that i own uh timbales on my on my drum set uh, a couple cowbells a wood block stuff like that so it's a lot more percussive stuff than just a regular just a regular drum beat would be um a basic rock beat so yeah i i i've had such a broad influence and um of course, the one that I always gravitate to, that I always will resonate with, is alternative rock and grunge. But I think second place to that would be fusion jazz. Fusion jazz is so fun to play because it's so complicated. Uh, it takes a lot more effort to learn. Um, and I don't know, like, the, uh, the easier music to play is kind of stuff you do to, to unwind. Or you don't have to really think too much about it. You just keep the groove, keep the rhythm, and you're paying more attention to the rest of the. Uh, you're paying more attention to the lyrics, I think, when people listen to to rock music. Uh, even though the instrumentation is important, you're you're really paying attention to the the, the uh, lyrics. But uh, fusion jazz is all about you know there's no lyrics, so it's all about the instrumentation, 100% focused on that. So, if, you know, fusion jazz, you would have your piano, the floor bass, the drums, organ, violins, horns, woodwinds. I mean, you'd have so much going either at the same time or that it would, some would step in and out of the, of the, uh, of the song in different parts. But one of the things that carries the song the most is the drums. Uh, it's like an, it's like the backbone of, of any song is, is the drums and, and also combined with the bass. Uh, it could be a floor bass, electric bass, anything. Like the drums and bass staying in the pocket and then the other instruments kind of revolving around that uh, is what makes drumming so fun. Uh, but it's especially fun once you get into complicated time signatures and uh, what do you call it? There's another term I'm looking for, but it's, it's not coming to mind. Where the, uh, the song will change uh, not only time signatures, but also tempo and also the... Uh, and it's, that's not coming to my mind. Just the the song is very complex, so the entire arrangement can change and then go back to what it was before uh, any time. Uh, but then you also have moments where it's soft and uh, it even it can be emotional as well. Uh, so fusion jazz, I really love. I I'm not a fan of smooth jazz. Like smooth jazz is one of those genres that I do not listen to like ever and whenever I do it's for some reason it, everybody has their genre that when they hear it it just makes them angry <laughs> I don't know why but smooth jazz just really does that it's like to me smooth jazz is like the pop of of 
jazz. It's so bland and so just, you know, it feels like everything's on a loop. Like there's not really much going on. Of course, you'll have your, you know, your, maybe your saxophone solos and your guitar solos or whatever, but Go straight. I don't know. I, I'm not, I'm not about it. I don't like smooth jazz at all. Um, and there, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with it because a lot of people like smooth jazz. So I know that it's just purely a preference of mine, but still. But fusion jazz, I, I love because of how complex it is. And, um, you know, there's bands that I, I watch constantly. You know, I'm bringing it up again, but the Dave Weckl band is one of them. Uh, Dave Weckl is one of the masters of his craft. Been playing for decades and decades, and you can tell in just the... Not even how complicated his grooves can be, which they can be, but just his, his fluidity and his confidence behind the set is just... You know, because you look at a, a punk rock drummer, and he's he's got he uses force, and he uses, you know, it's a it's a lot of uh, energy and a lot of power that goes into your playing style. But fusion jazz is like every small subtle hit that you do as part of the song, and it's like just having the craft to be able to know when to ease up on the dynamics that you're playing and when to really push it forward and also how to you know keep time signature and and manage those complicated rhythms and grooves without straying off of the beat um i don't know i love it i, I it's an art form to me really so that's one of the things that i love about uh about knowing how to play so many different types of music is you get to appreciate them all that much more once you're once you know how each one works once you know how each one evolves and changes um, and uh, it really just broadens out your your skill set because you you know how to play a certain way when it's a rock band but you also know how to play a certain way when it's a jazz band or a Latin band or you know when to stay more in the background or when to support more of the you know the, the uh, lesser heard instruments so that the the rhythm the pocket stays tight but you know in a, in a jazz band you might have a saxophone solo or a guitar solo and that's when you, you ease back you know so it, I don't know it's just all amazing to me and also it broadens your circle of friends as well because you just have that many more people that you can play with that can count on you to to play you know a certain style to match them because um, you don't you don't want some you know like i guess the equivalent of a of a diva <laughs> that will come in and try to take charge and, and play like only a certain way when you know the style doesn't doesn't uh, it, it doesn't lend itself to that style like you're as in the, the genre of music doesn't lend itself to that style of playing. So you can't play the same grooves, you can't play the same play style as you do in a rock band when it's a jazz band or a Latin band. Stuff like that. So it really just helps you to be adaptable and just be like... I don't know, that, that's, that's when I see the most... Um, that's, that's when I admire somebody the most, is what I'm trying to say. When they show up and they're all about being adaptable and humble and willing to change whatever they need to to fit the style you know they don't show up and demand that everybody play a certain way or they don't demand all the attention uh let's get our wipers on here it's very important um you know they show up and they're they're all about supporting the band they know that the drummer is the backbone of the song the backbone of the band and they they're there to support the band whichever direction it may go they they don't come in and try to change things or demand that certain things be done a certain way um, they can of course provide valuable input and feedback and stuff but that's when I admire people the most is the fact that they know so much but they they hold back and they they wait until the necessary time to you know divulge into their own opinions or their own uh, feedback or suggestions or anything like that um, 
And really, you admire people like that because of how much they know, but how humble they are at the same time. That just makes it kind of doubly more impressive. If that makes any sense at all. <laughs> but uh, the story I was going to mention is that uh, I think most people are familiar with the band Rascal Flatts. Um, there was a, a year when uh, the drum clinic that I, uh, or drum shop that I went to to take lessons was holding a drum clinic and um, Jim Riley the drummer of Rascal Flats, was uh, going to show up so it wasn't the, it wasn't a band related thing it was just him he showed up and he basically gave a drum clinic he taught you know some uh, techniques and some grooves on the drums and uh, he also handed out some sheet music for everybody to follow along with what he was doing and what's kind of cool is at one point he asked for some audience participation to, for somebody to come up and play. Um, I was there with my aunt. She had taken me there to the drum clinic. And so she's, when he asked that question, she's yelling and raising her hand and pointing at me like, yeah, pick him, pick him. And I'm, I'm just like wanting to disappear into the crowd. So <laughs> that's kind of funny. But at this point, I'd been taking drum lessons for about six or seven years. So I was really, really confident behind the set. Um, at this point, I was probably 12 or 13. Uh, so he invited me up. I got to play on his drum set. Um, so he basically kind of showed me, you know, the sheet music and was like, I want you to play this groove and, and do it this way or whatever. And I did it perfectly <laughs> on the first try. Because uh, I, had, I had developed that ability to just be able to just, you know, I could read, I could read sheet music, but also I could, I could adapt to a certain style if he wanted me to play it you know, in, in like a slower BPM or uh, to add like some accents or some, you know, some occasional triplets, triplet notes or whatever in there. Whatever, whatever he asked me to do or anybody would ask me to do, I can do it pretty much on the fly. Um, so I got to do that, which is awesome. I got to play on his set and then he uh, gave me his drumsticks to keep. Uh, and then he also signed my uh, <laughs> my sheet music, which he, he did for pretty much everybody. but. It was still really cool. So to this day, I still have that that memory. And that's actually why I don't know if you actually ever noticed. I'll pause the game real quick. My profile is Jim Riley because that's, and that's not his picture at all, but that's kind of where my homage goes to is, uh, is Jim Riley. So I have a lot of respect for him and a lot of admiration for him and what he does. So that's my cool story, my cool experience with uh, getting to meet a celebrity drummer we got to meet certain other ones like when we did a jump clinic for Thomas Pridgen uh, Thomas Lang um, I know there were several others that I can't remember the, at the moment but I also got to play uh, for my second drum teacher that specifically only taught me swing and and other jazz stuff uh, I got to uh, also play a song with his band me, me on the drums and then his band uh, at one of their gigs. He invited me up to the stage to do that, and so I was able to do that. So, man, yeah, drum, drumming is definitely my passion, and I, I definitely uh, learned a lot from so many cool people, made some good friends, and uh, all that. So it's really fun to think back on it. Um, nowadays, I don't play nearly as much as I used to. Uh, I probably touch my drums once every once a month or every couple months, something like that. Uh, I used to practice an hour every day. So it's kind of, uh, you know, a lot has changed since then, but still a passion. And I still definitely uh, enjoy it whenever I get a chance to do it, even though it's rusty and <laughs> out of pocket, not offbeat I can be now. But, um, Yeah, it's, it's been a blast, man. All those years of being able to do that. And uh, it's expanded to the point where I'm, I'm a lot more interested in... Uh, man, I'm not staying in my lane here. What's going on? I'm now interested in uh, you know guitar and piano again because I, I had initially started my... Back when I was probably five years old. So I started drum lessons at six years old, but at five years old, I started taking piano lessons. Uh, so I've been interested more in a, uh, a lot of piano stuff and wanting to kind of try to learn that stuff again. Um, 
all that stuff's really fun. Um, so, you know, I'm just a, I'm just a music buff in general. Like, I listen to music, you know, hours every day. Uh, it, so many different genres and types as well. And I appreciate them all, all the more so because of how, how much I've been able to learn about each one. So... It's been so awesome. And to this day, I still compose and, and write my own music. 45, goodness gracious. You really are slowing us down. Wow. Yeah, I still compose and make my own music. Um, I pretty much record and produce uh, all my stuff. Uh, I've been a lot more interested in uh, making uh, soundtracks for like films and video games so I, I make I don't have actual commissions to do that but I, I make music that could be used in that form just just trying to get more practice into you know into learning how to compose and write in those aspects so I've got a lot of software and such that I use as you know synthesizers or virtual uh, symphony instruments and uh, a lot of really good software out there that's super affordable or sometimes free that you can pick up and I think what helps you get the most out of your sound no matter how much you pay for a software is knowing how to use it if you know how to get everything you can how to just squeeze everything you can out of that plugin or that software you can really go places with it and make some incredible stuff. Even though it may not have all the features that you may need, that's why you know you, you go with more than one program or you sometimes do need to invest in a good quality uh, plug-in, stuff like that. So that's been really, really cool for me to just gradually improve and learn over the years how to do so many different things and it really is humbling the more that you learn because the more you realize how many different aspects and avenues go into like music production or or music composition and stuff like that and especially when people you know you think you know everything and then you talk to somebody who's super into one of those aspects it really helps you realize and appreciate how much goes into it and how much experience and insight and knowledge these people have that, that do it professionally on a professional level. It's incredible to me. So yeah, that's... Uh, welcome to Montana. There we are. <laughs> uh... Yeah, it's been babbling for a while about that, but you know, when you're passionate about something, you have a lot to say. Um, I don't remember where I was going with this. Not the whole point of this uh, conversation. But anywho, I'll turn it back to ATS related stuff now. Uh, so as I mentioned in the last video, Cannonball Run is this Saturday at 1 p.m. Central. Um, I should have the, uh, the broadcast already out there on my channel. Um, and the wipers are going kind of crazy. Aren't they? Um, should already have the broadcast set up for, uh, for the stream. Uh, out there on the channel so you can go over there and uh, select to be notified of it. Uh, I know that some other streams are going to be happening. Uh, Recon Lobster will be streaming it. Dan McNary or Goggles56 will be streaming it. Um, I want to say we've got a couple others as well. I don't remember. I don't recall at the moment. And uh, I apologize about that. I know I should probably know everybody. But yeah, that'll be fun. Uh, I'm looking forward to doing that. As I talked about in the last video, it's going to be pretty much a... Uh, 
I want to say it's uh, probably a four hour drive. Uh, not, no, not a drive, like a four hour event. <laughs> Because uh, the drive is actually over 2,000 miles uh, from New York City to LA. It's like they used to do in the 70s with those cannonball runs. That's kind of what we're doing. And we're going to be hauling beer. So that should be pretty fun. I'm thinking that I'm going to probably go with uh, one of Outlaw's trucks. Because the K100 is, is going to be part of it. But I just kind of figured that I use it so much. Uh... I think it would be cool to actually use one of the other ones. One, a truck that I don't use very much for that event. That's what I'm thinking anyway, so we'll see. And uh, I know that they had set aside 16 uh, player slots for it across two convoy servers. Uh, I don't know if that's still going to be filled all the way. We're going to have all 16 filled or not, but... Um, I know for sure we'll have at least one server full. We should. So. That will be great fun. I'm very much looking forward to that. Wish we could get this rain to go away. We're approaching a lot of, a lot more dark clouds up there, so. Looking at my fuel gauge down there as well. We're still good on that. Huge tank, so I'm not worried about us falling, falling short of fuel anytime soon for this run. So yeah, we're looking forward to that on Saturday. We hope to see you there. Uh, I'll be streaming, you know, the whole thing, including the before and after. Uh, I'll probably start. Uh, I don't know, I'll probably do some stuff on that server, you know, a little bit earlier before the event actually starts. Just uh, doing some deliveries and stuff like that. We'll see. But uh, definitely looking forward to it. Hopefully we'll see y'all there. We are driving, uh, it feels like just about across Montana. The gorgeous state that it is. These wipers crack me up. I have them on automatic. I keep going between fast and slow, fast and slow. All right, let's just, let's keep it on slow. Let's keep it on that. <laughs> we'll leave it there. Like that. Whoa, slowing down, slowing down. Oh, can't move over. Goodness gracious, man. That's why. Okay, we're getting over here. <laughs> I don't want to be in that lane when something goes wrong. Whoa. Sweet. Got the green light. Okay, get back in our outside lane now. We belong.
This rain needs to go away, man. We want sunshine. it's not raining when we pick up these poor livestock. Now that I think about it, it's been a while since I've actually seen some lightning happen. I don't know if that's just me or not, but... It feels like it's been a minute since I've seen some good lightning. In the game. Our exit. Exit right. I think we're going to round up. Could be wrong, but I think that's where we're headed. Get ready to turn left. Stop here. Turn Green left. Light. Let's hit it. Not often we catch a green light, so. Now we should. Nice cut work there. Oh, Peterbilt, actually. We've also got a cool light bar up on our uh, on our cab. I'll just show you that. Oh man! Hopefully it stops raining after we load up. Got a really quiet blinker here too, which is good. Frames, dude. What are those frames about? Dropping frames on us a little bit. Looking like we approached that square right there. You have arrived at your destination. Oh, looks to be it. Let's approach here. Let's pick our Market job here. There it is. Yep. So we're going to Jordan, Montana, Hell Creek Ranch. Sweet. Okay. So that's where we pull in right there. Uh, let's see what we can do. I think probably we can pull. Oops. Yeah. 
thought I was thought I was still in five for some reason. Yeah, we can probably just use this area here to back it up in there. Just have to turn it around quite a bit. Not a super long trailer, so we're gonna have to roll down our window here where we can look out. I don't think we gotta turn it too tight either. Okay, we're not gonna hit anything. Just had to make sure. clear on that so Keep coming around this way okay, we're clear there not gonna hit anything oh, okay we'll need to straighten out though I did not start bringing it back in time, so. More that way with it. Hopefully we get the green on this one. Yes, no, maybe so. I don't know if we actually went far back enough. Maybe we didn't, but it felt like we did. Either way, this will be better. More straight this time around. There it is. Yeah, not totally straight, but we got it. All right, close our window back up. I love that animation, that's cool. Stop our engine, and we are loading up. It's gonna take us till about 10 a.m. Oh, rain's gone, sweet. Nice and sunny again. Yep, we are loaded up. And the frames, are, it does not like this area at all. Frames are kind of bad in here. Some glitching over there. Looked like. Hmm. Okay. Start it back up. We're done with our wipers, so we'll turn those off. Be going out of here. I didn't pay attention. I didn't catch how much we're pulling here, but we'll find out soon enough. Probably have to stop by a way station. Get ready to turn left. Turn left. I think we're good on that side. Can't really see much that way, but. Oh yeah, we're fine. All right, so we got a pretty short drive ahead. Um, just shy of four hours, so. Not too bad. I 
what it is exactly about this area that it doesn't it's having trouble loading or something the frames are not solid through here. I don't know if that's the highway or what. What's going on with that? But turn left. It's a little better now. I don't know if it was just loading other stuff or what. Got 199 miles to go, and you'll get to see uh, Hell Creek Ranch in Jordan, Montana. So, ah, thought we were, thought we were gonna get there over there. Man, I love this carbon uh, the dashboard material. Looks so nice. I did think about going with a wood grain, but I like the modern look in this truck. Come on, where's our green arrow? There it is. <laughs> Second I look away, it gives it to us. Let us in. Nice. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Thank you there. All right. We'll settle here in eight hundred. I love the detail in these Rudas trucks because we got the scratches on the windows and man the customizability you cannot beat it. I mean the other ones that do get super super in depth are just like Dom's 379. It just starts to feel kind of overwhelming after a while and it, it really uh, I think that's kind of what tanks the frames a lot is all the uh, add-ons. Which, if you got if you got the uh, the power in your PC, you definitely know. <laughs> but I've talked to some of the guys in the uh, in the Discord server that have much much better PCs than me, and even they get the the frame drops and uh, the certain things that tank the frames, like the uh, certain trucks. So I definitely appreciate the work that goes into, you know, these Rudas trucks, making them customizable and such. Man, what is going on? Oh, we barely avoided them. Holy cow. What is that, dude? Those utility vans, are, they're... I swear there's something something wrong with them, man. Those utility vans always go extremely slow or do crap like this, like slowing down to 30 or 40 on the highway in the fast lane with nobody in front of them. And what is that mess? It's always these guys with the, the glass on the side. Crazy. Terrible drivers they are. They are indeed. I 
Uh, we took out the, uh, probably noticed that we took out our uh, late autumn mild winter mod as well. Just kind of wanted to go back to normal, see how everything looks. I guess the other thing that I do notice with the, without having color correction on, is that the colors sometimes look a little bit overexposed. Kind of like here, you can see the detail in the in the grass or the sand, and you can see the detail on the road, but it does look a little bit too bright. Stay right. Uh, unless I go into the outside camera like this, then it looks totally normal. So, I'm not sure what's up with that. Exit right. Man, I almost cannot hear that blinker at all. We're putting this cat engine to work today. Especially right here, see the road looks so washed out and just too bright. Maybe we'll hang out in our cab view for a little while. Let's head up there. City discovered. Nice. There's Miles City. We gotta slow way down through here. Oh, look at that. Tennis court. That's cool. Pretty cool. Nice place to sit out there. So a small town over here. Let's go back into our cab there. Waiting on our green arrow. We've got 90 miles to go. train cars. Oh, look at that. Headquarters right there. Why well, I need to 
Why need a headquarters when you've got ATS expansion? You can have anything you ever wanted in a, in a garage with ATS expansion. Really beautiful out here. Is that an actual? Oh, okay. Oh shoot! <laughs> We're going off the road there. I was busy looking at uh, sightseeing, looking up at that. I couldn't tell if that was a real man on a horse or uh, just a sign. It was just a sign. Go straight. <laughs> it almost made us wreck. I don't know why it's a random thing, but I want some ice cream really bad right now. Sucks that I can't really have that. Pretty much stuck stuck to uh, liquids at the moment. Can't really. Uh, it's not numb anymore, like the numbing wore off by last night, but uh, yeah, soreness is definitely real. I can't open my mouth too wide and uh, yeah, I just know the, uh, what do you call it, uh, the swelling is... <laughs> Not going to lend itself well to something that's ice cold. So. Go straight. It's really dumb that I crave that right now because I never crave ice cream. I don't have a sweet tooth, so. My guilty pleasure is salt popcorn or salted chips I could eat all day every day but sweet stuff I'll eat once in a while Welcome to Jordan. Sweet. Go straight. On the home stretch now, 31 miles to go. Let's go back to six. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, look at that stuff. That's cool. Oh, no stop sign, stop sign, stop sign. Stop sign. Oh, we ran that one. No point stopping now. That came up quick. I was not ready for that one. You really cannot afford to get distracted. Might find yourself veering off the side of the road or running a stop sign or who knows. Oh boy. Well, we're coming. We're coming. Had a 
long drive to get over here, so. Is this where we turn in? Recomputed. No. <laughs> Whoopsie. My fault. I turned a little too early. I saw the Hell Creek Ranch sign and... Oh, okay, so it's this part we, we turn into. Dude out there with the cattle. Yeah, this is it right here. And there we are right there. You have arrived at your destination. Sweet. Pull up over here and give us some room. So we gotta go to the other side of that uh, trailer over there. Can't really see too well. What's going on over there? Can't make out what's going on. Hope we don't run into a fence. another trailer guess we'll see right up against the fence so I mean we shouldn't be that far off let's turn over here a little bit oh yeah okay we are we are a little bit off gonna cut it a little more sharp I think Little, yeah, a little too close to that fence. We don't want to hit it. So hard to see what's actually going on back there. We didn't fare too badly. Yeah, we'll straighten it out again. Come a little closer to that other trailer that's there.
Go this way some more. Yeah, I just overcompensated to make sure I didn't hit the trailers that... Whoops. Turn that the wrong way. It's not going to help us any. Yeah, I overcompensated so much not wanting to hit that trailer that I actually missed it and came too close to the fence. We still gotta go a little bit ways over, I think. Not too much. Okay, well we got the green, but let's straighten it out. Let's get it all looking better. Just be able to go straight back. Maybe turn a little bit. Like that. It's better. Let's see how we look from on the outside. Not bad. We are definitely uh, in place, so. Took us a little bit to get there, but we got there. But yeah, welcome to Hell Creek Ranch. Uh, this is another um, livery spot. Good sized ranch over here. You can see lots of cattle, lots of open spaces. It really helps to have that realism. So let's go ahead and unload. They're waiting for us. Hopefully we're not late. Awesome, we got an excellent. Nice. So that was 208 miles, so I guess five hours, 46 minutes. Uh, 28 and a half gallons. Uh, so that was a high value cargo and an urgent delivery. So we fared pretty well with that. I'm pretty happy about that. So thanks for watching this one. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. I'm definitely loving the Classic XL Freight Shaker very much. Uh, I'll have a link to that one as well as the Pister Livestock Trailer as well as ATS Expansion, which you can follow the link to the uh, forum post to read about it. And uh, make sure it's installed correctly and everything. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. We're going to check out Ruta's two other trucks in the next upcoming videos. So we'll see you for those. We'll also hopefully see you at the uh, uh, Cannonball Run live stream on Saturday. So look forward to that as well. Thanks for sticking around. Please remember to subscribe if you enjoy this content. And please leave a like. Uh, I enjoy making this content a lot. So it really helps to have that support. I appreciate the love, guys. Have a good one.